This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Stick around to the end of the video for a special offer they're making available through my channel. Okay, so here's the deal. I don't do guides on my channel anymore. I used to do a lot of that, but no longer. However, for Hunt, I'm gonna make an exception. I'm doing that for three reasons. Number one, Hunt is amazing. I just reviewed it, so if you haven't checked out that video, I'll leave a link in the description below. If you haven't even purchased Hunt yet and you're wanting to know if it might be for you, then that video spends a lot of time explaining what Hunt is and how it works. That's the video to watch before this video, which gets into the specifics of how to actually play. The second reason I'm making this video is that Hunt is really hard to learn. The new tutorials they provide are uh, really, really bad. The community is not helpful at all and the margin for error while actually playing is very small since minor stakes will often see you get KO'd in a heartbeat. It took me around maybe 20 to 30 hours to learn all the stuff that's in this video. It really shouldn't take that long so I want to help fill the gap. And finally, number three, it's kind of hard to find resources to teach you how to play this game. A lot of other guides I've seen kind of pick and choose things to teach you, glossing over vital information that I had to learn the hard way. So that's what I'm trying to do this video. This video is not a tips video for how to maximize your KD. This isn't advanced strategies and loadouts and camping spots, etc. This is about the absolute basic stuff that you need to know in order to just play through the game at a basic level. The the video is divided into sections and there are timestamps in the description below for each of them. I'm going to start by looking at pre-game, specifically your loadout decisions and how to matchmake. Next, there's really three phases to a hunt round and we're going to talk about each of those. First up, there's the early game which is about clue finding leading up to the reveal of a bounty. Then there's the boss battle and the banishment. And finally, there's the escape and the extraction. Once all of that's done, we'll wrap up talking about hunter progression, unlocking gear and gear choices. So with that, Let's jump in. All right, so first things first, do the tutorials. I won't lie, they really are pretty terrible. And I think they do a good job of teaching you a whole bunch of stuff that's wrong. Like it's okay to shoot zombies and bosses die really fast, etc. But they do teach you the basics of collecting clues and extracting bounties, so they're valuable enough. They don't take long, just knock them over quickly and move on. After you've done that, the first thing you're going to be worrying about is your hunt bucks balance. You're going to be thinking, how long will these last me? Should I buy that first aid kit or should I save the money? Am I going to run out of hunters and be in a position where I can't play the game anymore, etc, etc. These are all normal thoughts, so let me lay this out for you very quickly. Hunt will always give you a free hunter every single time you play a round of hunt. You just go to the recruitment tab, you buy the free hunter, you play a round. If you die, which you probably will, you'll go back to the recruitment tab and there'll be another free hunter there waiting for you. You are never going to be in a position where you can't bring a hunter into the field, so don't worry about that. The free hunters come with basic health, crappy gear and no perks, but as you level up, higher level hunters become available. They're more expensive, of course, but you'll decide for yourself whether or not they're worth that cost when you see their loadouts. Either way, don't worry about hunters at this point. You're always going to die and you're always going to have a free replacement. When it comes to spending money on gear, it's important that you don't invest in stuff you don't need, but that you absolutely purchase the required essentials. At the start, everything in the store will be locked, but as you earn XP, you'll quickly unlock the most helpful items. Weapons wise, the Winfield starter rifle is just fine, as is the Nagan pistol. Both do the job. Yes, Yes, they're weak, yes they lack range and rates of fire and scopes and all that stuff, but that doesn't matter this early in your journey. At the start, being good at hunt is 95% about knowing where and when to fight and about 5% gear. That equation changes over time as you become more experienced and you know how to use that gear, but for now just know that your crappy weapons don't really put you at a disadvantage. If you die, it's because you are bad, not because your weapons are bad. The most important tools and consumables to bring along are a first aid kit, a knife, a firebomb and a stick of dynamite. If your weapon has a bayonet or something like that on the end of it, you can skip the knife, but everything else is pretty non-negotiable. First aid kits do what you think they do, they'll heal you up. You can use them three times and they'll heal about 30% of your health. You can also use vitality shots which are faster but more expensive. Either way, as a new player, just be sure to always bring a first aid kit with you. 
The knife is used to melee PvE enemies. In Hunt, using your gun is generally a bad idea unless you're firing at other hunters. You'll use your knife about 85% of the time when playing Hunt, so don't leave home without it. The firebomb is important because it allows you to burn enemy hunters' corpses if you manage to take them down. When a corpse is burning, it can't be revived until the fire stops, and when it gets burned out enough, the player is permanently dead. You can find lanterns on the field that do the same job, but having one of these with me at all times has been super helpful. Finally, dynamite is critical because it allows you to break down barricaded doors, blow up barbed wire barricades, and most importantly, flush out entrenched opponents. Dynamite has a pretty huge blast radius, so if you throw it into a building, you can bet your enemy is going to run out. Never leave home without a stick of dynamite. Once you have the right equipment, it's time to matchmake, and that's where the fun begins. You may feel like the best thing to do at the start of your hunt journey is to queue solo to learn the game. Maybe you don't like the pressure of a teammate setting the pace, or maybe you feel like a liability and you don't want them abusing you when you inevitably fuck up. Just trust me when I say this, do not queue solo into this game, at least not for the first 20 or 30 hours. Matchmaking with someone is important because by watching them, you're going to learn how to play this game. Experienced players will immediately strike out in the right direction. They'll avoid sound traps. They'll know when to get down and hide and when to push forward. There's a lot of intuition at play when it comes to hunt and falling in behind a more experienced player and just following their lead is the single best thing you can do to learn how to play. If you play solo, I guarantee you that you will have an awful time and your learning will be 20 times slower than if you match made. So yeah, I really can't stress this enough. You have to match make, you have to fall in behind someone, you have to follow their lead, you have to watch them play to learn how to play this game. This is the way. The shitty thing about this is that as a really, really low level scrub, no one will want to match make with you. You'll queue up and everyone will drop queue straight away. It's frustrating, but you'll get over it. Stick with it for a few minutes and eventually someone will take pity on you so long as you have at least the required tools and consumables. If you don't have those things in your inventory, then just expect absolutely everyone to bail on you. So eventually you'll match make with someone and you'll be dropped onto the map. It's now time to talk about how to handle the clue finding phase of Hunt Showdown. In Hunt, the first few moments on the map are critical. There's almost a checklist you should be going through every time to give you the best chance at success. So where does that start? It starts with your dark side. Holding it down lets you see the nearest clues. The larger and clearer the blue light is, the closer it is to your current position. You wanna find where that position is by looking at it and then open up your map to see the corresponding building. Then do the same thing for other more distant clues. Begin building a route in your head so you can move as speedily as possible from one clue to the next. But don't rush things though. As you check the map to see where the buildings are, you also wanna see where you are because based on that, there may be other players nearby. Hunt drops you on a random section of the map, but it can also drop enemy hunters just a short distance away, sometimes less than 100 meters. If you start sprinting madly to the nearest building, there's a good chance that you'll get jumped by an enemy team. For this reason, check the map, check to see where other hunters could spawn in, and as you move close to your first location, be sure to check the other possible approaches. At the beginning of the round, you're likely to be doing a lot of sprinting, and this is when you'll start learning about how stamina works and how important it is to manage. As you sprint, you'll consume your running stamina, and when you're exhausted, you'll see a little lung icon in the bottom left-hand corner. When this happens, you can still run, but you'll be running a lot slower. Walking for 10 or 15 seconds will refill your running stamina, but there isn't any sort of bar, so you'll just have to judge it based on experience and necessity. Later on, you'll unlock perks that allow you to run for longer, but we'll come back to those. The most critical thing to note about stamina is that you cannot refill your melee swing energy while you're sprinting. Every time you melee swing at an enemy, you'll lose some melee energy. And if you then sprint while this is depleted, your melee swing bar will not refill. This can leave you extremely exposed when you're being swarmed by zombies or those stupid hounds. Long story short, if your melee swing bar is empty, 
don't sprint unless you absolutely have to. Let it refill first and then start sprinting. It's gonna make things much safer for you if you get caught out unexpectedly. The last thing before we move on is be sure to check if other hunters are in the area when you're collecting a clue. When you use your dark sight near a clue, the icon in the top left-hand corner will flash white and you'll hear quiet whispers like this. When another hunter is nearby, you'll see the icon flash red and you'll hear angry whispers like this. Be sure to check this every time you approach a clue as you'll lose the ability to do this the moment you pick up that clue. These checks have saved my life many, many times while playing. Okay, so now you're past your first one or two minutes on the map. Let's talk about how to get around the map without getting killed, really, all of a sudden. Like this. We've already spoken about sprinting, but long story short, you should almost always be sprinting when you're out in the open. You're extremely exposed when you're going from compound to compound, so the faster you move, the harder you are to hit. The other thing I'd strongly recommend doing is moving erratically. Just make it a habit to move left, right, to jump, to zigzag, to take unexpected turns. All your opponent needs to line up a headshot is two to three seconds of you moving in a straight line. You remaining unpredictable in your movements will often be enough to get them to hold fire and they may not even engage at all if you're too far away. Hunt's maps are a collection of buildings or compounds connected by vast tracts of space. The most important thing to remember is that being on the open roads is basically the worst possible thing you can do. Two reasons for this. Firstly, you're much easier to spot out in the open, and secondly, most of the PvE enemies are located on the main roads. If you stick to the shrubbery and the foliage, you're going to be a little slower, but you're going to be way, way safer. It's typically worth taking significant detours if it means you can stay off the main roads. The day-night cycle plays a very big part in all of this. It's a lot safer to travel out in the open at night time or during fog. If it's sunny, then yeah, it's just, it's a bad idea. A general point I'll make here is that in hunt, speed matters, but it's always balanced against your need to be stealthy. Good hunters are always moving quickly from location to location. You can't stealth everywhere because it's just too slow to do so, and being the last person to find the boss location puts you at a distinct disadvantage. You should be trying to play and move as fast as possible, but never in a way that makes a lot of noise. You'll mess this up a whole bunch as you learn, but eventually you'll get better at it until it starts to feel like second nature. No matter how speedy or stealthy you are, you're still going to need to contend with at least some of the PvE enemies. There's only a handful of them in Hunt, and they each have their own unique way of dealing with them quickly, efficiently, and quietly. So let's go through them now. First up, zombies. They're zombies. They don't do much. They just walk towards you. They do a little damage. That's about it. Some of them will carry cleavers and flame torches. So watch out for these guys and be sure to deal with them first. Uh, there's also a medic type of zombie who actually will poison you if he hits you, but he drops health kits so he can be quite helpful if you find yourself in a pinch. Like all enemies in the game, zombies make noise when you aggro them. So if you can avoid that, then that's good. You can simply stealth behind them to take them down completely silently. You'll notice that I'm not shooting these enemies with a gun and there's a good reason for that. In the hunt tutorial, they sort of give you the impression that you should be shooting everything you see. This is exactly what you shouldn't be doing. Instead, you take out your knife, you hold down the attack button, and when you get close to a zombie, you release it to strike. It will generally kill them in one hit and then you move on to the next. You can do this four times before you run out of melee energy, so be sure to keep that in mind if you ever find yourself getting swarmed. Ultimately, zombies are pretty harmless and you won't need to think too too hard about how to deal with them. Try and avoid them if you can, stealth kill them if you're really worried about noise, otherwise just melee them with one heavy attack, easy. Next up are your armored zombies. These guys are basically the exact same as regular zombies, except they take three heavy melee swings to kill. You can also use a flare or a flare gun on them, but they make a lot of noise when they go down this way. Avoid shooting them with bullets as they are resistant to those, and it will take around five or six shots to bring them down. There's a variant of these that are covered in barbed wire, so you'll take damage and bleed when you hit them. Not much to be done here other than avoid them if possible or bring them down fast and patch yourself 
yourself up after. One use of a first aid kit will repair the damage. Immolators are one of the more tricky enemy variants. So first up, avoid these guys like the plague. They're always just the worst because they make so much noise. If anything on the map is going to give away your position, it's probably crows, but it's probably also these guys. They're just jerks, so just stay away from them. If you do engage them, don't pierce their skin with bullets or a knife. If you do, this happens. Instead, take out your rifle, your shotgun, or your pistol and hold down the melee button to do a heavy melee attack. This will hit them with the butt of your weapon. In four or five hits, they will hit the floor. This is best done in conjunction with another player. The Hive are probably my most hated enemy in the game. They scream like bloody murder when they see you and launch a swarm of insects at you that damages you and poisons you, stopping you from recovering stamina or healing during that time. If this happens, use your knife to swat them away. Ideally, you want to avoid these enemies altogether, but if you need to engage them, charge up a melee attack and run straight at them and aim for the chest and they should go down. This will typically one-shot them, but always be prepared for a second swing, as they sometimes need to. As soon as they die, the swarm will stop attacking you, so you won't need to swat them away at that point. Unlike immolators, which are typically in open areas, Hive are regularly guarding clues or compounds. It's a very good idea to stealth behind them to take them out before they can swarm you. You can also use silence weapons or throwing knives to get the job done. Meathead enemies are perhaps the most harmless enemy in the game. They're actually blind, so they can't can't see you unless you get poisoned by one of their slugs, at which point they'll run after you and blindly swing. Just keep running away at that point until he either gives up or the poison wears off. Meatheads have a ton of HP, so it generally isn't worth killing them. When one of them is guarding a clue, the best thing to do is for someone to distract them while the other person swoops in and collects it. At this point, you both just make off like bandits, leaving the meathead to go about his business. The most dangerous enemies in the game are hellhounds. They patrol in packs in open fields, but can sometimes be in compounds as well. They will typically howl when they see you, letting everyone in the area know exactly where you are. They'll run up to you and pounce, which deals damage and makes you bleed. They'll go down with one heavy melee hit, but because they move so fast, you might miss a swing. And if four of them are on you at once, things can go to shit really fast. Avoid these guys at all costs. You should never, ever engage them unless absolutely necessary. And when you do, be sure to met up and get the hell out of there straight away because you can bet that other hunters will be headed your way. The very last enemy type are the water devils. These are weird tentacle monster things that live in the water. You'll hear them make a sound as you approach them and when you step into the water they'll begin thrashing wildly. They'll head towards you and will absolutely shred you if they catch you so basically don't get caught out by them. Best thing to do is to step into the water somewhere to trigger them and they'll head towards that location. Step out of the water and then find another place to cross 20 or 30 meters away. They'll try and catch you at that new location, but if you time it right, they won't have time to reach you. You can also shoot them, but no one does this. And those are the enemies in Hunt. The most important thing to remember is that enemies themselves are generally harmless once you get some practice in dealing with them. The real threat is in the sound they make, when they aggro, when you hit them, and when they die. You get XP for killing enemies in Hunt, but your goal is to avoid killing enemies as much as possible. The XP gains just aren't worth the risk of other hunters finding you, so always try to avoid killing enemies whenever possible. Speaking of sound, let's talk briefly about sound traps and how to deal with them. Hunt Showdown is far more about mastering the sound you make than anything else. If you can control the soundscape, you can essentially control the battlefield. Hunt bakes sound into the core gameplay loop. We've already spoken about the sound made when engaging enemies, but the map provides similar challenges. Let's go through the different sound traps now and the best way to deal with them. First up are things like gates, cages, and doors. Doors can be opened silently if you crouch down when opening them. Gates and cages cannot be opened silently. Gates are pretty quiet, but if you can avoid opening them, it's a good idea to do so. I've killed a few people because I've heard a gate open 10 or 15 meters away. Cages, yeah, don't, don't open these. They make so much noise, just find another way in if you can. Next up are the hanging sound traps like bottles, cans, and chains. You typically find these in internal spaces. If you walk or run past them, they make a sound, but if you crouch through them, you'll remain silent. 
This is most important to note when you're defending a bounty during a banishment, since you'll often be moving about inside the room where you killed the boss. These items will give away your position in those spaces, so avoid them if possible. Related to these are ground clutter, things like glass and tin cans. They make plenty of noise when you walk over them, but again, if you crouch, they will be fully silent. This also goes for walking on tin roofs. When you're up there, the enemy can hear your location pretty clearly, but you're silent if you crouch. Keep in mind though that hanging out on the roof without moving quickly is generally a bad idea because it makes you a very easy target. When you're outside, two of the biggest sound traps are caged chickens and dogs. Both of these will start to make some noise as you get close to them, but if you get too close, they'll start going apeshit. You cannot avoid triggering these if you crouch. It's all about proximity. If you get too close, they will trigger. Best way to take them down is to use a throwing knife on the torch above them. This will make some noise, but a lot less than if you trigger them. If you do trigger them, just take out your weapon and shoot them straight away. Enemy hunters are going to know where you are anyway, and your gunshot isn't going to make things any worse. The only reason you might want to leave the cages intact is if you plan to flee that compound pretty quickly. At that point, the enemy is not going to be able to hear you make an exit, or they might arrive a moment later hoping you were still there. Next up, horsies. Get too close to them and they'll whinny. I think that's the word, you know. Hey. I don't think that's the word. Anyway, let's move on. The sound they make isn't as loud as others, so don't flip out too much if you trigger them. What you should be deathly afraid of are the motherfucking crows. Oh my God, these guys are so loud. They work the same way as the caged dogs or the chickens do, in that they start to get restless if you get close and they trigger based on proximity. You cannot stealth past them if you are too close. When they trigger, they let out an almighty cackle that can be heard from the other side of the fucking map. I've killed many many people because I've heard crows sound out somewhere so don't let that be you avoid these jerks at all costs one thing I'd strongly recommend you do is ping sound traps so your partner is aware of them hunt has you thinking about so many things at once that it's easy to overlook things and trip over some crows because you weren't paying attention highlighting stuff for your teammate is gonna make for a smoother ride for everyone involved the last thing I say about sound is that you need to be connecting the sounds you hear with the location on the map with the objectives you're aware of. So here as an example, I'm walking along with my teammate carefully making our way towards the boss area when suddenly we hear dogs barking behind us. I check my map here and I know that at this point in the game, these hunters have to be heading in our direction because they're going to be coming for the boss. That was all we needed. We turned around, we set up for an ambush and we just waited. Simple as that. In Hunt, the sounds you hear in the distance tell you where the dangers are, but if you have enough map awareness, they also tell you where the opportunities are. Try to piece all of these pieces of information together as you play. At some point, you're going to discover where the boss is, either because someone else killed it and there's a banishment going on, or because you've collected three clues. So at this point, what should you do? Well, the first thing you need to know is that you don't always need to contest the bounty, and you may instead choose to just extract at this point. Doing so means you've collected a little experience, a little coin, and your hunter can come back with some better gear and perks next time around. So why would you do this though? Why wouldn't you go for a bounty? Well, you may be in a situation where you've already lost a chunk of health from a firefight. Maybe you've used some of your tools or consumables. Maybe your partner went down or left the game. Maybe you're really, really far from the boss location and you can hear tons of gunfire near there. Maybe you won't be able to safely reach the location before or the banishment is completed, at which point the enemy hunters will have wall hacks and be able to hunt you down with ease. There are a lot of reasons why contesting a bounty might not always be the right call, and there's no shame whatsoever in extracting and living to die another day. Most people don't do this though. Most people contest, so how might you do that if that's your goal? Well, if you're not the one banishing the boss and you're trying to breach a compound, there's a few things to keep in mind. Firstly, the approach is key. There are certain directions to each compound compound that provide more cover than others. It's always worth taking the long way round and going for those safer approaches. You never want to be in a position where an entrenched enemy has a clear shot at you from one of their defensive positions. It's pretty much over straight away at that point. Ah! 
Second, you have to watch out for other hunters on the map. At this point, you have to assume that other hunters are making their approach as well. Don't just keep your eyes on the target location, also keep an eye on other pathways into it, because you're more likely to die on other hunters making an approach than you are to the hunters who are completing the banishment. Next, try and let other hunters fight it out. Very often, you'll make an approach while a firefight is in progress. This is the perfect opportunity for you to strike, so don't waste it. Don't shoot on a single target from afar. Instead, try to use the noise and the chaos to sneak right into the banishment room and KO the hunters while they're looking out the window at other foes. If none of this applies and you have a clear path into the enemy compound and there's no other hunters nearby, the most important thing here is to keep the noise down and probe for a way in. You can expect enemy hunters will have set up traps and are guarding at least two of the entrances, but almost all boss areas have three or four ways into them. Your job is to find the a gap in their defenses so you can slip in unnoticed. Waiting for them to come out also sort of works, but when they do, they'll have enhanced dark sight and will be able to see you through walls. If you can avoid their traps, move silently and try to get the jump on them, this is generally your best chance at success. Let's say you found all the clues before the banishment happens, what do you do? Well, you probably want to haul ass to the boss and be the first one to kill it. Doing so is going to give you a huge advantage since you'll be able to set up to defend it. When you arrive at the compound, be sure to check that no one else is there first. You can do this by using your dark side. If the icon glows red and you hear angry whispers, you know you're not alone. If you are alone, your priority should be on setting up for the encounter. If you have traps like alert traps or concertina wire, you want to seal off entrance points so that enemy hunters can only enter the compound through the places you're comfortable with. You may also want to clear out any PvE enemies since their yells or their footsteps can obscure enemy sounds. Be sure to leave sound traps like crows, horses and caged animals in place as they can alert you when someone is moving in. Next, choose the door you're going to want to find fight in. Fighting bosses is about entering and exiting the boss area so you can safely recharge your stamina and med up if you get hit. You don't want to be using a door facing a massively exposed area as the enemy will have a clear shot at you when you are extremely exposed. Choose the right entrance to use for the fight before you commit. Finally, it's time to get a melee weapon. Shooting bosses is an extremely bad idea until they're on their last legs. The bullet sounds will give away your position while your attention is on the boss. The aim is to beat the boss to death with axes, mallets, and pitchforks you'll find nearby, since these are all but silent. The enemy will only hear you if they're in the same compound, and you want to conceal your position for as long as possible before enemy hunters come running. Once this is all set up, it's time to kill the boss. So look. There are three bosses here. There's Spider, there's Butcher, and there's Assassin. And they're all kind of identical in how you fight them. The trick is to simply walk in with a heavy melee weapon, hold down the attack button to charge a melee attack, wait for the boss to stop moving nearby you, strike twice, and then run out to recharge. There are some extra details in there around the specific sounds that bosses make before they attack, or how long they'll sort of lunge at you and chase you before they give up, and when you can turn around to whack them, etc, etc. But overall, that's the general strategy. Also be aware that bundles of dynamite or sticky bombs are really good at doing massive amounts of boss damage very fast, but obviously they do give away your position. Generally speaking, most people will just go in, hit them twice, run out, You'll learn the rest as you go. Oh, and don't be shy to fire your weapons towards the end of the boss's life. Everyone on the server is about to know where you are anyway, so it's really no big deal. As soon as the boss dies, it's go time. At this point, you're going to want to med up any damage you took and find an ammo cache to ensure you're at full ammo. You're going to want to survey the room to see any potential entry points and think about which traps to lay and where to camp. You're going to want to look at the map and guess which way the enemy is likely to approach from, and then think about setting up watch in those directions. You're going to want to find one or two places you can silently patrol between, since you can't trap and watch every location at once. There's going to be some gaps in your defenses, but that's by design. You just have to do the best you can do. Keep in mind that in the final 10% of the banishment, there's going to be a lot of noise. The cackle of lightning and thunder is going to obscure a lot of enemy sounds, so be extra cautious in that window. 
Once the banishment is completed, you're going to be able to pick up a bounty, but hold up because you may not want to do that yet. When you do that, there's a big pillar of light above you wherever you go on the map. Enemies can see your approximate location from anywhere. What this does is stop you from roaming because you can no longer maintain the element of surprise. If you're pinned down in a boss room and the enemy are waiting for you to come out, you may not want to pick up the bounty so that you can silently sneak out and search for them. You may also want to grab the second bounty on the map and having this big pillar of light above your head is going to make that pretty tricky. Generally speaking, yes, pick up the bounty and look around, but sometimes that might not be the right call, so just think about it first. The extraction is one of the more tense parts of the game for the simple reason that unless you've personally killed 11 other hunters, you never know how many hunters there are on the map. There could be six people out there waiting for you to come out, camping at various points between the boss room and the extraction point, and you'd have no idea when you take those first cautious steps. The enhanced dark sight does help. For a total of five seconds, you get a sort of wall hacks allowing you to see the location of other hunters. It's an approximate location though, and there's still a large margin for error when it comes to the final shootouts. Five seconds is a very, very short length of time, and you may run out of dark sight before you reach the final extraction location. It goes without saying that every move should be a cautious one as you emerge from the boss room, and a swift one after that. The one piece of advice I'd offer here is try to go to the extraction point that isn't anywhere near where your enemies are hoping you will go. If there's an extraction nearby to a boss location, I almost never go there, preferring to go the exact opposite direction. What this does is put you in a position where you're essentially impossible to catch. By the time the enemy realizes you've gone the other way, you have a 30 second lead on them, which is all you need once you reach the extraction point. It can be a little nerve wracking going through these long runs at the other end of the map, but I've never once been jumped at an extraction when I've been doing this. If all goes to plan, you'll find yourself back at the menu screen with your saddlebags full of XP and hunt bucks. So what should we do with them, huh? Well, firstly, you can't do anything with XP. You just earn that shit and it gets dumped into your hunter and your blood rank. Your blood rank is important because it determines the tier of hunter you can purchase from the recruitment tab. The higher level you get, the more tier two and tier three hunters are on offer. These hunters come with the same HP, but smaller HP chunks, making it easier for them to recover lost health when they take damage, since any health chunk that's completely depleted won't regenerate automatically. These hunters will also come with more expensive gear and a handful of perks, but we'll come back to those soon. Keeping an eye on XP is important though, because it will determine when stuff is unlocked in the store. The way this works is that most basic items are unlocked with XP, and then you use those items to unlock variants of them. So the Viterli 71 rifle, you'll unlock through blood rank levels, and when you use it for a while, you'll eventually unlock the bayonet and deadeye variants. You can check the store tab to track your progress towards each weapon, tool, or consumable. The other place your XP goes is to your hunter, so long as they live. If they die, then they don't get any XP and you move on to the next hunter. If they live, they get XP that they can use to buy perks. Perks unlock with your blood rank, so you'll have more options the more you play. Now look, there are a lot of very good, very useful perks here. There are some duds as well, but on the whole, most of them are going to provide you some powerful utility to depending on your loadout and playstyle. Personally, I recommend Determination since it means you can get your stamina back sooner. I really recommend Greyhound since it lets you run faster for longer. And I very, very strongly recommend Quartermaster since it lets you use a medium weapon in conjunction with a long weapon instead of only being able to bring a short weapon. So basically it means you can bring a rifle and either a small shotgun or a hand crossbow. Both of these are extremely powerful secondary weapons making Quartermaster very useful. All of these other perks are far more situational, so pick and choose based on what interests you. If you manage to get your hunter to level 25, you're going to be offered the option to retire him or her. What this does is remove all of their items and place them in your inventory, and then it will sacrifice that hunter for experience. You'll get 1000 experience towards your blood rank for every level, so if you have a level 25 hunter, you'll get 2500 experience. If you can get your hunter to level 50 and win rounds with them, then every single XP you earn will go towards your blood rank, so you get huge amounts of XP very fast. However, 
you are new, you will die often. So my strong advice to you is to retire your hunter at 25 as soon as you can, as moving through the unlock path more quickly is way more valuable than having a hunter with a few extra perks for one or two rounds before they inevitably get minced. One last thing, be sure to check the challenges tab inside the progression tab. There are daily and weekly challenges there that provide you with weapons or blood bonds. I wouldn't worry too much about completing this stuff since the rewards are really crap, but you might have accidentally completed them without realizing it, so it's always good to check. So what's a beginner's guide without a little combat advice, eh? Well, I'm probably going to disappoint you a little here by giving you the honest truth, which is this. You're going to have a really rough time starting out in Hunt. You're going to go round after round where you just feel like you're utter trash, no kills, no extraction. You'll spend some money on extra gear thinking it will help, but you'll just lose it all instantly. Your teammate will res you once and then just leave you to die the next time you get down because they think you're just a liability. You're going to be missing easy shots because you're just too panicked and nervous and stressed to land them. All of that is going to happen and there's really not much you can do to stop it. Hunt is not about your MLG 360 no scope skills, though they do help. But most of the time, encounters won't come down to who landed a headshot or who has better gear, they'll come down to who has outmaneuvered better. It will be determined by the person who could sneak in unnoticed and blow someone up point blank. It will be determined by the team who can outflank their opponent, the person who can move to the right piece of cover and use it in the right way. It's like 5% gear, 15% aim, and 80% controlling the flow and positioning of an engagement. That is how you hunt. And no guide can really teach you that stuff. I mean, sure, we can talk about basic principles like don't make too much noise and stay mobile and don't get cornered, don't waste the element of surprise, etc. But you'll figure all of that out as you go. The most important things to think about are everything that I've listed in this guide. If you follow that advice, then gunfights are going to be a lot easier because they'll be on your terms with the element of surprise on your side, with traps set up from strong defensive positions and in locations where you can't be outflanked. Ideally, you want the first shot you fire to be the one that puts them down. And the point of this guide was to put you in that position. I hope it helped. This video is brought to you by friend of the channel, Squarespace. And if you haven't checked them out yet, then you totally should. Personally, I took what I loved doing and was able to turn it into something I made money from, but I had YouTube to help me do that since I wanted to upload videos. But what if I wanted to sell custom art or plants or clothing or exercise equipment or whatever? For that, I'd need a website and there's no better tool for building a website than Squarespace. Squarespace allows you to build a professional looking website in mere minutes. Using simple, intuitive tools, Squarespace removes all the hassle and lets you focus on your business or hobby or whatever it is you love. Even more advanced features like e-commerce and SEO are a breeze in Squarespace. To get started, visit squarespace.com and when you're ready to get serious, visit squarespace.com forward slash skill up for a 10% discount on your first purchase of a website or a domain name. Thanks Squarespace for sponsoring this video and thank you for watching it. Thanks for watching my video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down so I know to do better for next time. If you enjoyed yourself, consider subscribing. And if you really enjoyed yourself, maybe consider hitting that notification bell so you never miss a video. You can see my patrons here on the left. They're awesome. They're amazing. If you want to join them, check out my Patreon page. Thank you again. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.